to another broadcast of DeSoto in depth. And the reason being is because we spend a half hour talking about a subject that's hopefully of interest and hopefully a subject you want to learn a little more about. And that's something you're going to be able to learn about today uh, from either going online and looking at some of the things that we have up or by listening closely to our two guests. I'm Matt Smith. I'm going to be your host. Uh, we have two distinguished uh, members of DeSoto's community and of the arts in DeSoto. Uh, right next to me, uh, dressed in very plain drab attire, is Rolanda Brigham, who is a artist in DeSoto. And you actually, you could tell, you could, you could, you could see by, uh, you'll learn from her demeanor and her dress uh, that she is expressive, and uh, that's key to being an artist. And uh, we have someone else on the uh, on the show today coming to us from Hotlanta, Georgia. Uh, we have our consultant on the cultural arts in DeSoto, our cultural arts master plan, and everything as we move forward. It's Margie Reese. Margie, you uh, uh, you you are with us, and you are you are looking totally creative and artistic today. <laughs> Thank you. Good to be with you guys. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I'm going to start out with the uh, first question from Rolanda to uh, uh, tell me a little about the art scene in DeSoto and what you've seen in other cities and, and how we're getting there here. Well, the art scene in DeSoto is emerging. I've seen... Um, plays at the Corner Theater. I've seen artists perform in the libraries and I think and when they have the Juneteenth festivals and the Hispanic Heritage Festivals and all of those festivals I've seen artists uh, perform but the majority of the artists come from outside of DeSoto and I'm sitting here going hmm hmm so that's exciting and what I've seen in other cities in Chicago and in Dallas, um, they have a, um, they use a lot of local artists. Um, they have uh, theater like Dallas Mime Troupe or Chicago Mime Troupe or in Chicago like Second City or just different arts organizations that are specific to that city. And that's what I'm looking forward to here in DeSoto because this is a wonderful city. This is an all-America city and uh, I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to let my little light shine in the city of DeSoto because I love it. See, that's exactly what I was talking about. You, you feel uh, the arts and the creativity flowing, and, and maybe that's something that you would see in DeSoto before, but you might have people shake their heads. Now they're shaking in agreement. Yes. And yes. Uh, we have uh, someone who really knows their stuff as well joining us. Uh, Margie, we talked about it's great to be an artist and to do your own thing and to, to really love the arts, but it's not, it hasn't always been organized in the past, but that's changing. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your efforts to not only cultivate arts in DeSoto and maybe create our own farm system for artists, uh, but how there's some structure finally being added. Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, I was asked by the DeSoto Arts Commission, I guess two years ago now, uh, to begin a conversation with residents to think about how to do more of a deep dive into creating a structure for the arts at DeSoto. So the Arts Commission has traditionally done a really good job in granting out dollars for special events. A lot of those events we discovered in our uh, review were pr presented by, as Rolanda said, organizations from outside of the city. Now, those events were highly patronized. This was pre-COVID. Uh, people were really enjoying them. But for many of them, they were one-offs. They were a one-shot deal. So a, an organization comes in, does a production, people applaud, have a good time, and then they go away and it's months before the next event. So our work to build a, a formal cultural plan for DeSoto, I, I, I teach arts management, Matt, and I have a saying 
that passion is one thing. I don't do passion. Planning is another thing. I do planning. So that the passionate people like Rolanda will have a foundation to work from. So the Arts Commission went through a year of review, um, constantly um, keeping the city manager's office uh, informed about what we were thinking and getting some course corrections from them, and then presenting this work to the city council. So now that you have a master plan, which you'll see on the city's website, you needed an implementation strategy. So then how do we get there? So that's what we're working on now. And the first piece of our recommendation is to begin to identify artists that live in DeSoto, artists that work in DeSoto and have a commitment to working in DeSoto so that these one-off deals uh, don't continue, but that we're able to build a system where young people, adults, elders, tourists, and visitors can see a year ahead of time is our goal. What's happening in DeSoto around arts and culture? And uh, thank you, Margie. I want to ask Rolanda, uh, does this kind of sound like the view that uh, you and, and the local arts community, uh, you're starting to see that we're not only serious about this, uh, but we're putting out the canvas and the paints now rather than just visualizing? Uh, yes, and it's exciting because if you live here, we want to live here, we want to work here, we want to share our passion, our art with, you know, people in the city of DeSoto. We don't want to have to drive to Irving. We don't want to have to drive to Garland because we have so much to offer. And I'm so glad that DeSoto is taking this step. And uh, we're here. We're on the ground floor. We're, we're here to... Uh, be the foundation to keep it going and it's exciting because there's a buzz going around and people are calling me and I'm calling them and we're like yeah it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's gonna happen because we're here and we've been here through all of that and we're not going anywhere because we we're property owners we pay taxes and we love our city you know so many people think of people who uh, are seen in the arts whether it's a an artist who does the works and mediums like sculpture or painting or a performance artist or maybe someone who's in theater uh, but artists are everywhere and it might be you go to a restaurant that artist needs to make a living they may be the person waiting on your table or they may be the person uh, doing a delivery so uh, I just want to stress this is not any kind of culture war these are everyday people who yes. live on your block and if they can't express it in a canvas Maybe they do it by having a really nice lawn, or maybe yes. they pick that shade of paint on their street that has everybody shaking their head, but, <laughs> but they're making an expression. Yes, well, on my block, I'm the house with the emerald green roof, and everybody knows, okay, she's uh, some artsy-fartsy person, but now I tell my neighbors, I said, well, when people are coming to your home, you can say, I live two doors down from the house with the emerald green roof. So it, it makes a difference, and when you walk the streets of DeSoto, DeSoto is a very clean city, you can see the houses where the people are artsy-artsy. They may have a... Uh, um, the hedge is shaped like bananas or something, but you know, we're there. You may go and um, see the waiter in the restaurant and he's, he or she has folded the napkins a really fun artistic way. We, as artists, we need to express ourselves in a positive way and people, artists in DeSoto, are finding ways to do it. Uh, I have to ask you, Margie, I, I start looking at you more and more as almost like a manager of a team. Uh, and since Rolanda and I both have uh, some history in Chicago, uh, we talk about the Bulls. You're kind of like the Phil Jackson of DeSoto. You've got some, uh, some big personalities, uh, and you're, you're moving them all towards uh, that, that peat and repeat and uh, hopefully where we really are, that bastion that we think is being built. Uh, could you talk to us a little about the temperament of artists and working with them and, and what special skills do you have to take to, uh, to uh, herd them in the right direction? And, and yes, I, I can liken it to herding cats too. <laughs> well, let me just say that uh, in, in the performing arts in particular, artists are accustomed to being directed. They bring their talents, skills, and energy 
but there is someone who has a vision for the entire production that says, I need more of this from you and more, more expression, more tone. And so maybe this image of being the director, the, the staff at the city has been incredibly responsive. Uh, I can't say enough about Kathy Jones and the work that she does to keep these pieces together. Both the city manager and the deputy city manager have been weighing in as we've been moving this process along. So my job is to ask questions, uh, is to probe, is to make sure that we understand everything from the Texas tax code, this is how much fun I have in my job, <laughs> to equity. So I'm not concerned about the quality or the kind of programming that artists, I am concerned about quality. I'm not concerned about the kind of program that the artist wants to do. My job is to make sure that a system exists so that the city council can feel comfortable that, that the tax dollars that are collected through the hotel occupancy tax fund are allocated um, in, a, in an accountable way. My job is to make sure that the, the, the mother of a child who seems to have an artistic interest has a place and a way to help that child explore their creativity. So I have to zoom out. I have to keep the big picture in mind. Um, and be able to see where the dots are connected so that if there is a gap somewhere, uh, we're able to work within the structure of the city uh, to make sure that we're, we're bringing in the resources to help fill that gap. But as Rolanda said, there are resources here in the city, Matt. They just need to be woven together through resources available through different departments within city government resources available in the private sector, um, store owners and small business owners that are interested in seeing their, their neighborhood improve its aesthetics. And then the most important audience that I have to be aware of is, believe it or not, the tourist. Because we wanna, be in a, we wanna have attractions for people not only to stay in DeSoto and participate in the arts, but to come to DeSoto and participate in the arts. So we've got a couple of rabbits up our sleeve uh, that we'll start working on and revealing in the, in the next several months. But our first step is to make sure we capture a strong roster of artists that, be, that can begin to make creativity more visible to the people that live here and the people that visit our city. And, and it's funny because you could see elements of that already uh, go to our library on a weekend and you will see uh, sometimes they will have people doing painting. They even had uh, some young future designers not too long ago going to sewing camp where they would take old denim jeans and recycle them into things. It, it, right. It's all a form of expression. And I know from following a lot of DeSoto's uh, projects in the future, you start seeing public art elements in them. It, it, is this all by design? Well, you know, the... The, the worst thing about artists is that they keep making things. They keep having ideas. So in DeSoto, as we, we were saying, if we build a system so that those new ideas have a place to take seed and grow, then you're developing this bastion, as you say, a robust arts community where creative people can feel welcome and can feel a part of city government and part of the civic fabric of your community. So that's my job is to make sure that Rolanda is able to um, curate the kinds of arts programs that the city wants to welcome. My job is to make sure that there is accountability in that process and there's public engagement and involvement in that process. And there is a sense of aesthetics um, in, in everything that we do. No, so that, that, that sounds good and it sounds comforting to uh, not just me, but yes. to, to our, our on-the-spot artist. Uh, yes. Rolanda, what kind of art do you do? I am a theater artist, uh, and theater encompasses everything. I'm a stage actress, a film actress, voiceover, I do mime, uh, I create plays, I'm a playwriting, and I'm also a master arts, uh, I teach art arts integrator in education. I create 
I'll take a curriculum and infuse it with the arts because the arts saves lives and go back with the teacher and making sure that the curriculum adheres to the teaks and we go and teach a, teach a class through the arts. I may do a math class through the arts or a science class through the arts and the teacher is just like, whoa, okay, I never saw arts in that and this is something that uh, we started way back in the day at Arts Magnet with Paul Baker on the product of that big experiment they did from 76 through 80, integrating uh, arts into the curriculum and arts integration where you see art in everything. And I do, and that's what, that's how I make a living. What? Every child ready to read, I, I go into schools and make learning fun because I'm one of those people, I have the attention span of a gnat. And if you don't capture me, I'm going to be doing something else or doodling on a piece of paper. But when I leave, these students, when the bells ring, they're not ready to leave. And I've never met anybody who's not ready to leave a history class or, or a science class. They're there and they're like, what are we going to do when you come back? When are you coming back? And there's art and everything. And that's what I do. You know, let's go back about five, ten years American history, it's great, we learn it, but I never saw someone passionate about Alexander Hamilton and suddenly, wham! Well, you make it come alive. You reenact it, you give people different roles and they take ownership in it. And for them to be good at their role, they have to go back and do the research and learn everything about that character. You know, and then when they come to the table, they're there, they know. They know what's going on, and it's exciting because they're learning, and they're excited about learning because knowledge is power, and the art saves lives. It does, and I actually, I've, I've told this to Kathy a couple times, but I, I've had the, the privilege of being in Amsterdam and various parts of Holland and, and, and seeing Vincent van Gogh, or as my Dutch friends would say, van Gogh. <laughs> and I'm not going to repeat that because then I'd have to wipe off the screen. It's, it's horrible uh, to try to pronounce some of those Dutch words, but y you get by. And what I noticed is the brush strokes are very intense. As, as much as you know about the man, when I would see him, I would think, ooh, there were some emotional issues there. And then I started hearing people talking about, oh, yeah, Vincent van Gogh, from a psychological standpoint, probably would have been out hurting people if he didn't have art to create. So... That's the extreme of it, but arts is expression and sometimes strong emotions. If you channel them the right way, it, it, it keeps everybody safe and happy. Oh, yeah. I taught at an alternative school in Chicago, Truman Middle College, and I had the worst of the worst who were kicked out of every public school in Chicago. And when they came to me, they were like little lambs. They came, they were brilliant. We, I just had to figure out a way to let the arts seep in, and the arts actually saved a lot of lives. These guys who are taggers, they're artists. We took that and turned it into a positive, and they're creating murals on buildings and stuff instead of hanging upside down with a can of spray paint, painting something, and I'm like, I don't even know how you did that. Girls who are creating designs, and you know, some of these kids got scholarships to uh, the Art Institute, and just, Everybody is artistic, the girls who like to braid hair. They taught people, you know, they now have their own beauty salons. Uh, it just, uh, it inspires the community. When they do something in the community, they take ownership of it. And, you know, nobody's going to come around and tag and deface or do anything like that. And it's the youth, the youth, and then a lot of the seniors, the seniors will come and they're like retired art teachers or dancers or, or sculptors or they still have a lot of life and that's what I see here in the city of DeSoto. We have an amazing senior citizen uh, community and they are brilliant. They still have life, they still have so much to give and we need to make that connection. And it, it'll just explode. So that's one of the many things I'm excited about. I'm really glad you're a guest today because I, I think anyone watching this feels the arts through you. And, and Margie, I want to ask you one of, these, uh, one of the toughest questions in history uh, besides people questioning why we're hearing things is, 
what is art? And I think Rolanda pointed out something very interesting that art, there's a lot of different mediums to art and they're not all something that goes on a canvas or gets chiseled out of stone. Could you just give us a general overview of the type of art that you're, you're aware of that the uh, cultural arts master plan encompasses? Well, art is a, is a cultural output. Um, you, you can create clothing as you see from clothing around the world that expresses a people's culture, who they are, how they think, how they live. And so it's difficult to describe what art is. In some ancient cultures, there is no word for art. Art is life. Art is the food you eat. It's how you take care of your elders. It's the way you solve problems. You'll see arts in science. There's a, you know, there's a kind of a, an interesting delineation when the Department of Education started using the acronym STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Somebody decided to add the arts, but they didn't have to because art and creativity is at the epicenter of science and technology. It takes thinkers and creators to design technological systems and responses to human needs. So art is broad and deep. For DeSoto, it's also important that we think about the humanities. What is the story of DeSoto? So that the next generation of DeSoto residents will understand how DeSoto was built, who settled this area. What is Nance Farm? It's an iconic uh, location in the city, but uh, the average fifth grader may not know the story behind that, that area of your city. DeSoto has beautiful park systems. So who are those parks named for? And why? what is the natural terrain of that city that makes it such a beautiful place to live. So art is all around us. It's, it's in everything that we do. And I am biased in that direction. I don't think that there is a person on the earth that does not have or utilize some degree of creativity uh, in their everyday lives. Whether it's standing before the judge and telling your story, <laughs> and embellishing it, or whether it is delivering a fine piece of, of sculpture. So I think art is in the eye of the beholder, but it's centered in human nature. It's centered in culture. And so I wanna see for DeSoto, this is a shameless plug before we run out of time. Go ahead. Um, I wanna see residents involved in this process. People who think I don't do arts, I don't have any artistic talent, but they have good judgment. And part of this process is engaging the community and making decisions about how city funds are allocated, what kinds of programs are important for our city. So on the city's website, um, and, and I think you'll get a slide to, to send you to that website uh, to look at pretty soon, there'll be opportunities for you to volunteer to be on a review panel. So not just to be a part of you know, a theater production, but to decide where that theater production should happen. Who should be the audience for it? What kinds of artistic products do we want to purchase for the city uh, residents to participate in? So in addition to, um, thank you for putting this up, in addition to the first grant making program under this new public art plan, the DeSoto Artist Lab, the lab will actually contract with local artists. Yolanda will be a huge part of that. We'll, we'll contract with local artists to provide residency to take up a residency in a park, a public space. You know, Houston has a huge artist in, ho in the hospital program. We've placed artists at Scottish Rite Hospital to work with kids who are really having severe health issues to write their stories. That's art, that's creativity. So we're looking for uh, uh, artists who would apply to the DeSoto Artist Lab uh, grant making program. It's our first opportunity. All the information you need to know, it can be found at artsdesoto.com. Uh, that'll tell artists how to apply for that. And at the same time, there'll be opportunities for local residents, citizens,
to be a part of reviewing those applications and making the selection on the first artist that'll be a part of the artist lab. And then in the months to come in the new city's fiscal year, other grant making programs will be revealed. So I want to make sure that those um, audience members that are listening and watching this broadcast will just keep up with what's going on in the arts by going to artsdesoto.com. And if you can't remember artsdesoto.com, just Google something like Arts DeSoto or DeSoto Artist Lab or the names of, of either of our guests, Margie or Rolanda, and eventually you'll end up at one of these linked pages. That's, that's the wonderful thing about search engines. They'll take you where you want to go, sometimes even if you're not sure where you're going. Uh, it, it's kind of cool thinking that DeSoto is going to have a lab where we're going to be not, we're not cloning our artists. We, we want to have individuality, uh, but we want to have them grown locally. We want to have people who can continue to give to the world. And when you're a good artist, that opens a lot of doors. Uh, you, 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 sometimes you can break the, uh, uh, the barrier between cultures. Yes. You could secure a scholarship. You could maybe take a tour. Uh, and at the very least, you'll be living every day where uh, things aren't boring. It might be a lot of hard work, but you're touching people. And I think that's one of the keys to all of us and to, to every basic artist. You want to have that human contact and you want to evoke an emotion some way. And uh, we're, we're winding down, so I want to give you each a chance to give your, your thoughts about uh, where we're going what people need to know, uh, and even if it's plugging the DeSoto Artist Lab at artsdesoto.com again, that's fine. Uh, we're going to have you, Rolanda, give us uh, your perspective, and then we'll make uh, Margie the closer. Okay. Well, my perspective is we are here. We finally have um, a place where we can go and let our little light shine. We can make a difference in our all-America city, which we're very proud of. We can, you know, if it's working with the senior community, if it's working with the Head Start, if it's working with the people in the funeral homes, there are artists there because you need people to put makeup on, you know, people. We're here, there's a place for us, and we believe, and I believe, and I'm just really, really excited. Very excited to be able to do what I love to do for a city that I love. And we could feel that because our cameras have been unplugged for several minutes, but they're just going on the energy that you're putting out. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you. And, and now let's uh, jump to the, uh, to the southeast coast of the United States for some closing thoughts from uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Margie, uh, your thoughts. I have to first say I'm very proud of the DeSoto Arts Commission for almost putting a, a pin in their work and stopping to think about uh, articulating a plan for the future. And I also want to give a shout out to the DeSoto City Council and the mayor for believing that the arts are an important component of civic life. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to the city manager and the city staff and to Kathy for you know, questioning my answers and asking more questions when I provide the answers so that they could fully understand the commitment that the city is making in launching this plan. I believe that every person has a right, a human right, to cultural expression. And for the residents of DeSoto to have access to local artists, uh, we, we do want to encourage people to continue to take advantage of the resources in Dallas and Fort Worth. But when you're nudged in, just in between those two mega cities, DeSoto has a chance to rise, to self-identify um, as a creative city, as a destination for cultural tourists, and as a place that values history. So let's see how much we can build. Our, our slogan for the cultural planning process was, Imagine DeSoto, and that's what we're asking people to do. Imagine the DeSoto that we can build with the creative minds that you have in your city. Well, I don't know if people give artists their due often enough. Uh, sometimes it's just looking at something and, and changing someone's day that I know makes a difference. But I know 
you two ladies, you two artists uh, who are making a difference in, in the everyday life of DeSoto. Uh, I'll, God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for working with our, our, our council, our mayor, our city management team, and uh, thanks for being our guest today on uh, DeSoto In Depth. Thank My you pleasure. for having me. Have a good rest of the week. Thank you.